Hi, this is Tony Lin. Uh, welcome to my video. So a couple of days ago, one of my audience uh, want, uh, asked me about the FDA's approval about the Pfizer vaccine. And uh, that is why today uh, I want to uh, do an analysis about the FDA. And in today's video, I want to share you three things about the FDA. Hopefully uh, by sharing uh, these data, and uh, you can uh, have a better uh, understanding about the FDA and also you can have a better judgment about the FDA's approval of Pfizer vaccine. So I'm going to uh, show you three things about the FDA. First uh, is FDA's efficacy. So what is the FDA's efficacy? Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, look at the uh, 200 FDA approval and look at these uh, approval and uh, find out how many of uh, these approval after the FDA approve uh, these uh, drug or uh, therapy and uh, later uh, uh, there is a, a safety issue happened uh, on some of the, these uh, 200 uh, approval. Uh, we're going to uh, find a study for you so that uh, you can see exactly the uh, percentage of uh, these uh, FDA's uh, efficacy. And the second, uh, we're going to look at the uh, FDA's funding. And I'm going to share a data to tell you where is the FDA's funding is from. And third, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, share who are the people actually uh, doing their work in the FDA and uh, are they trustworthy people and uh, what is their background. So without further ado, uh, let us uh, start from uh, FDA's efficacy. So um, for FDA's efficacy, uh, I found a study. Uh, this is uh, from uh, jamanetwork.com. This is not a conspiracy website. And uh, if you look Google uh, JAMA Network, uh, what is the JAMA Network open? JAMA Network is monthly open access medical journal published by the American Medical Association covering all aspects of uh, biomedical science. Okay, this is not a conspiracy website. Huh? A lot of people are uh, accusing me uh, you, use the data from a conspiracy website. Uh, Google yourself and uh, do me a favor, please. Uh, this is uh, from a uh, legit uh, science journal website, JAMA Network. Okay, I'll include the link for you so you can actually uh, go ahead to check this uh, study yourself. Uh, don't believe me 100%. Check, I, I encourage you to check the data, to verify the data and leave the comment below if I make any mistake. So uh, here is the study uh, uh, published on May 9th, uh, 2017. What is the title? Post-market safety event among novel therapeutic approved by the U US Food and Drug Administration between 2001 and 2010. So what is the, what are they doing? So in this study, uh, among 200, among 222 novel therapeutic approved by the FDA from 2001 through 2010, 71 were, 32% uh, were affected by a post-market safety event. So that means that 32% uh, percent of these approval uh, actually uh, after these uh, drug or therapeutic uh, they uh, uh, went to the market and 32% uh, uh, of them actually uh, have a safety issue and that means uh, what is the efficacy of FDA that's a 68% uh, so let me read it for you post market safety events were more frequent among the biologic therapeutic indicated for the treatment or of a psychotic disease 
and also those receiving a serrated approval and those with a near regulatory deadline approval. Oh. Later I'm, I'm going to show you this Pfizer vaccine is actually uh, uh, approved uh, near the regulatory uh, deadline and I'll show you the evidence. So now you see that FDA's approval is a uh, uh, 68% and uh, 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 let me okay let me show you what is the uh, post market safe, safety event so here is the here is the definition of a sa post market safety event uh, uh, they have uh, three of them uh, withdrawal due to safety concern so this is the, the drug uh, withdrawal uh, due to the safety concern. And the second, second category is F FDA assurance of an incremental, incremental box warning added in the post-market period. So that means uh, uh, FDA, after this uh, drug is approved by the FDA, FDA has to uh, uh, Add a change its label to add a, some warning in, uh, on the box, so that is a, a second kind of uh, uh, safety event, and also third FDA assurance of a safety safety communications. So these are the post market safety event. So let me uh, repeat again: uh, the art of uh, safety uh, event after the FDA's approval is uh, thirty two percent. And here is, it also says uh, post-market safety events were more frequent uh, within those uh, receiving accelerated approval and those with near regulatory deadline approval. So if uh, that means if the approval was uh, is uh, accelerated and uh, also this uh, uh, deadline is uh, close to the a regulatory deadline then uh, the safety issue is more frequent then let me show you what is the definition is a uh, near regulatory deadline approval uh, here let me show you so uh, here uh, it says one analysis of novel uh, therapeutic approved by the FDA between uh, 1993 and 2004 found that therapeutic approved in the 60 days prior to the statutory decision deadline. Oh. Hereafter referred as near regulatory deadline approval. So this is the definition of a uh, uh, deadline near regulatory uh, deadline approval within 60 days uh, prior to the deadline. Now, let me show you uh, when did the, uh, this uh, Pfizer vaccine approval. And uh, let me show you and when was its uh, deadline for approval. Uh, let me show you this news from New York Times. So uh, I'll include the link for you. Uh, don't uh, accuse me, I uh, used the link from the cons conspiracy website. This is from New York Times. Uh, uh, let me read it for you. Uh, here, uh, this is news is published August 3rd uh, on New York Times. With a new surge of a coronavirus infection ripping through much of the United States, the Food and Drug Administration has accelerated its timetable to fully approve Pfizer BioNTech coronavirus vaccine. Accelerated, accelerated, accelerated. So this has been accelerated. It's not I. It's not. It's very important. So I say it three times. It has been accelerated, according to the New York Times. This is the red flag number one. Now, let me show you the red flag number two. Uh, President Biden said last week he expected a fully approved vaccine in early fall, but the FDA's unofficial deadline is Labor Day or sooner, according to the multiple people familiar with the plan. Okay, when was the deadline? It's unofficial. 
is on official deadline. It's Labor Day or sooner, right? So now uh, let me take you to another website, uh, FDA's website, to show you exactly when the FDA approved the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, here, uh, this link is also uh, from FDA, not from the conspiracy website. I'll include the link for you. Go ahead to check the date. Uh, here it says, uh, FDA approved the first COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, this is uh, when, when was the, this uh, released? Uh, for immediate release, August 23rd, 2021. Today, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the first COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine has been known as Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. So it was approved on August 23rd. What was the deadline? The unofficial deadline was Labor Day or sooner. This uh, vaccine is uh, approved. Very close to the deadline, August 23rd. It is almost Labor Day. Labor Day is uh, on September 1st, right? So that's a red flag number two. So, right, I already show you, according to this uh, study, the safety event is more frequent when the approval is accelerated, red flag number one. And also the Pfizer vaccine approval date is within the 60 days of the approving deadline. So red flag number two. So I'm not going to say anything about this vaccine. I'll, I'm just present you the data. And uh, I believe you're smart enough. Uh, you're all smarter than me. So you can make a, a better judgment for yourself. Now uh, let's uh, go to the second part of uh, this uh, video. Uh, we're going to talk about the FDA's uh, funding. And uh, here I'm going to uh, give you another link. Uh, this link is from FDA its own website. So uh, do not accuse me using the uh, information from the conspiracy website. This is uh, from FDA's uh, website. And even uh, look at the title of uh, this uh, article. Uh, even the title says the fact sheet. So if you want to do a fact check on me, uh, fact check uh, this web website first. Uh, fact sheet, FDA at a glance. Uh, where, where is the, his uh, funding from? Uh, let me show you. Scroll down and here, uh, program funding. The FDA's budget for physical year 2019 is 5.9 billion. About 55% or 3.2 billion of FDA's budget is provided by the federal budget authorization. The remaining 45% or 2.7 billion is paid by the industry user fee. Okay, 45% is paid by the industry user fee. What is industry user fee? Uh, let me show you another link. Uh, this link is also from FDA's website. So I'm not making this up. So here uh, it says uh, physical year 2021 and physical year 2022 user fee rate. So user fee type, uh, there's a user fee type. One is the application fee uh, with a clinical data required. Uh, in 2021, how much is that? $2.8 million. So let's say uh, you are Pfizer. And if you want to submit an uh, application uh, for FDA's approval, uh, this is uh, how much fee you, you're going to pay. This is a uh, user fee rate. Uh, so, uh, so that is a uh, that is a uh, industry user fee is actually uh, paid by the big pharma like Pfizer or Moderna. These is forty five percent of uh, FDA's funding. Uh, imagine uh, if you work at uh, FDA, uh, actually 45% of your salary is coming from Big Pharma. And uh, this is the uh, funding source uh, from, uh, for the FDA. Now, uh, let me show you uh, who, who are the uh, people work in the FDA. And I'm going to show you a person uh, his name is uh, Scott 
Godly. Uh, this is from Wikipedia. Uh, I didn't make this up. Uh, this is also not from the conspiracy website. I include a link for you. Go ahead to check this person, Scott Godlib. So who is uh, Scott Godlib? According to the Wikipedia, is an American physician and investor who served as 23rd Commissioners of the Food and Drug Administration uh, from 2007 until 2019, April. Oh. And uh, he is also a member of the board of the director of the drug maker uh, Pfizer. So I didn't make this up. Uh, he is the uh, uh, FDA's commissioner and also uh, he is the uh, board of the directors uh, of the Pfizer. And uh, let me uh, show you a little bit more about the detail of uh, his uh, career. Uh, so actually, before he was the uh, FDA's uh, commissioner and before he was the uh, uh, board member of the Pfizer, he actually, uh, from the 2003 to 2007, uh, got to work for the U.S. Drug, Food and Drug Administration from 2002 to 2003 and 2005 to 2007. Oh. He first served as the senior advisor of the FDA commissioner. So he worked uh, in the FDA a long time ago. And uh, even before he became the uh, 23rd FDA commissioner, uh, where did he work? Uh, let me show you. In 2016, uh, Gottlieb testified before committee of the United States House of Representatives. And uh, at the time, he was the independent director at the uh, Taliro uh, Pharmaceuticals. Huh. Obviously, like, uh, okay, 2000, uh, 2002 to 2007, uh, he was working at the FDA. In 2016, he was working for the big uh, pharmaceutical. And in 2017, he became the commissioner of the FDA and uh, 2019 after he retired quit the uh, FDA commissioner he became the Pfizer board member it's like uh, okay let me show you if this is uh, uh, this is the FDA and this is the pharmaceutical company and uh, there is a revolving door uh, between these two and what oh, one time he suddenly worked in the FDA and then another time through this door, he worked at the pharmaceutical company. And then he back at work at the FDA. And then he back at the pharmaceutical company. I didn't make this up. I mean, look at the, his Wikipedia, right? I'm not going to go through all the detail. I include a link for you. And uh, I'm uh, just a stupid person. I, I didn't see any... Uh, uh, conflict of interest uh, between the uh, uh, FDA and the pharmaceutical uh, companies. So uh, hopefully uh, you're smarter than me. You can see uh, better than me. So that's uh, my introduction about the FDA. Uh, from the I show you the FDA's uh, approval advocacy, and I also show you uh, FDA's funding, and I also show you uh, who are the uh, people work in the FDA, are they trustworthy? So uh, hopefully uh, uh, you have a little bit better understanding about the FDA and uh, you can have a better judgment about the uh, uh, FDA's approval about the Pfizer vaccine. And uh, if you think uh, this video is helpful, uh, please uh, share this video with more people and subscribe to my uh, channels i have uh, uh, a lot of uh, different channel on uh, not just youtube but, but rumbles and uh, uh, odyssey and uh, facebook and also locals.com and uh, telegram uh, submit the uh, subscriber to whatever channel you like to use and have an amazing day i'll see you soon on these uh, channels bye